click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of 
your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of 
your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of 
your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of 
your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of 
your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running, we were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running, we were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running, we were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of 
your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, how would you create a shoe that I could walk in completely normal and ride on my bike in the best way possible? Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation sort of for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes. Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me how... Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Chapter 3 um, Asia Hub and Press Conference. I'm Ely, the MC for today. 邀约单车非常荣幸能够代理英国顶级的自行车服饰品牌 Chapter 3. Thermal Tech Bicycle is proud to take on the role as the Chapter 3 Asia Hub. Chapter 3是2015年由英国的前职业自行车手David Miller所创立的 主打的是顶级时尚的单车服饰以及配件并且与英国知名的折叠车品牌包含Brompton还有我们看到的Aquila生产了非常多限量联名车款 Chapter 3呢相信人的一生有三大篇章分别是工作家庭还有娱乐那娱乐对于现场的大家来讲就是我们最喜欢的自行车咯 将单车融入生活中就是将单车的质感展现在随处每一个细节 Chapter 3 is a cycling lifestyle brand Founded in 2015 by former pro cyclist David Miller um, Chapter 3 has collaborated with the like of Frompton and Aquila to create limited edition bikes The brand believes every person has three chapters in their lives Family, work and play and is dedicated to creating the finest sportswear. 今天将会有三样重要的新品要在这边跟大家见面 Chapter 3最新的自行车相关服饰配件也会在今天的时装秀中登场 Today we will be launching three brand new products and the latest Chapter 3 apparel collection will be unveiled during our fashion show. 那今天活动一开始先让我来介绍几位重要的贵宾 被唱名到的贵宾，请站起来跟大家挥挥手，打声招呼嘛！哇，今天大家真的是很踊跃哦。So now I'd like to introduce the distinguished guest. When I call your name, feel free to say hi to everyone here, okay? 首先让我们欢迎耀乐集团董事长暨执行长林培熙林董事长，President and CEO of Thermal Tech Bicycle, Mr. Kenny Lin，欢迎欢迎林董。接下来是远道而来 Chapter 3的共同创办人以及CSO Mr. James Allen Carnes Welcome! Welcome to Taiwan The co-founder and CSO of Chapter 3 Welcome to Taiwan again 
。那同样也是远道而来，是从加拿大来的 Aquila Cycle 的执行长 Mr. Frank m i z e r s k y Welcome, CEO of Aquila Cycles. Thank you for joining us today. 也要非常感谢以上贵宾，还有今天所有在现场参与的媒体朋友，还有车友们，当然还有非常多正在收看直播的好朋友。那么接下来，首先让我们邀请到耀悦集团董事长暨执行长林培熙 Kenny Lin 上台来为我们致辞。Now please welcome Mr. Kenny Lin, the President and CEO of Thermotech Bicycle, to say a few words. Uh,大家中午好。好。谢谢你们，大家这么热血，这么热情哦。特别我认识的从呃新朋友变老朋友的过程当中，到变车友，到变支持我这一群朋友，我非常感谢你们今天这么大的阵仗来捧捧我的这
It comes with two versions, a SPD compatible version and a freight pedal version. And it's available in the black and the white colors. The uh, also, the designer James Cullen uh, brought his experience as a former creative director of the Adidas and designed the first uh, cycling shoes that can be the world, the world today. The Chapter 3 Transit is the definitions of the comfort, luxuries, and the innovations. I'm excited to have a James with us, and I can, I can wait to hear more from the designer himself. The country is another dream team collaboration between the Chapter 3 and Aguilar Cycles. The cartridge features full caliber integration and improvement the aerodynamic efficiency. It's a lightweight and a beautiful design, low bike tested by the country members. It's made by the pro for pros. And I'm excited to have the Aguilar Cycle CEO Frank here to share more. Uh, chapter 3 has an extensive range of the cycling apparel. The new Chapter 3 apparel collection has a bicycle clothing design for pro ride, street wear for the casual looks, and a multifunctional piece for everyday wear. The collection comes in the two series, the mission cycling sports wear and the traffic street wear. The mission series introduces the aero jealousy for men and women in fire raid, outer space blue, stone blue, uh, leaching greens, and uh, electric purples. And it made in Euro, designed by a pro racers. The ultra light and the aerodynamically car the jealousy feels like a, a second skin. There are also the long sleeve jealousy, the packable girt and the um, a uh, weaking base layer for the body fit and comfort. The missing series including the cycling, the BIBs and the shorts for men and the 9 inches short for women. And it is available in the color like a carbon break, outer space, blue and the forest greens. The traffic wear, the street, sorry, the street wear has a light, high quality hoodies a uh, sweater shirt and a t-shirt, more than 100% organic curtains, and only available here. It's a limited edition for Chapter 3 Asia Hub t-shirt, the t-shirt I'm wearing now, Asia Hub Chapter 3. Made in Taiwan, I decided to celebrate this launch. Please make sure to also pick up before you leave. Uh, so, beside these awesome products, why is the collaboration important? Why does it matter? Because it affects the global climate. Our mission with the Chapter 3 is to promote a cycling lifestyle. Because we believe it. Cycling lifestyle provides great health and environmental benefits. According to the research from the University of Oxford, uh, choosing a bike over a car just once a day, you can reduce your carbon emission by 67%. I cycle and from work every day. I ride my Brunton foreign bike, which is great for the traveling in the city. And I, I take my road bike when I'm looking for the speed. I have fun. It's great for environment and great for my health. So, I'm definitely be editing the chapter three, briefer and the cartridge bike to my collection. And since I'm often in cycling, cruising, the chapter three's mission jealousy and the traffic street wear is a perfect for my lifestyle too. In line with the chapter three, the brand philosophy, every person has a third chapter. Cycling is my third chapter. I first found the success in the IT business. And now, I'm fulfilling my dream by opening the Somote Bicycle Frog Street Store. Getting the opportunity to work with an amazing brand like a Chapter 3. So I hope all of you can join me and enter a new chapter. By embracing the Chapter 3 cycling lifestyle. 
Thank you for all for joining us today. Our media friend, partner, and our cycling community. I really appreciate it. So now, let's get the show going. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. 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 请先回座。哎，那我快速的把董事长刚才说的，哎，说一下。他刚才非常重点的帮我们带到今天，哎，很重要的 Brompton V4， 还有跟 a k i l a 车队的特制涂装，以及 Transit 这双车鞋，还有非常非常多的 Chapter Three 的服饰。那其实大家可以看到，后面那一区呢，已经有 Chapter Three 的服装，等一下都可以来试试看。当然，我们有服装秀，要让大家一探究竟。那当然，我们要非常感谢耀越单车，让我们有这个机会见证 Chapter Three 登陆台湾，因为。大家应该都知道这个牌子，只是哎，在台湾买不到啊。我们要就是，然后透过国外网站来订购，而且我们今天是与全球同步来揭晓这一连串的新品。那当然，今天的重点就是即将要揭晓的这些新品。刚才哎，董事长说自己马上就要来有这两个收藏了，因为其实 Brompton V4 它是非常适合在城市通勤甚至上班的一个车款，所以呢，接下来就将各位的目光转向大荧幕，我们一起来欣赏以下的介绍。影片 Now, please enjoy a video on the Brompton Chapter Three V4. I wanted the Chapter Three Brompton to be like the BMX I had when I was a kid, to kind of go and discover things. That's what the bike is. I've been seeing more and more where people just want to get up using the bike to hang out, to go and be together. We are so attached to our phones. If you just turn it off, all of a sudden you've got your freedom back. Night Riders is an extension of friends that have known each other for over 20 years that really use cycling as a way to bond. I was like, I could share this with my whole community, you know? We just had people coming out time after time after time again. And Night Riders as a community ride was formed. In the beginning, we would just ride, and people be like, "Where you going?" Like, "Oh, we're going to Flushing Meadow Park." All right, cool. I'll ride with you. Riding at night is always fun. Everything about it feels slightly off kilter, especially in Brooklyn, where I've never ridden before, and with a crew who know it inside out. Andre, Quazy, Free, and Reg were so welcoming. It was a completely different vibe to anything I've known in the road cycling world. When I ride with the crew, there's a freedom. There's a movement. And you get to see the city in a way that's phenomenal. You know that just opens you up. This Brompton, this version with the Chapter Three, man. You know, with the titanium front and back, is a sweet ride, man. And it's lighter than I expected. The days in my tote bag is heavy. <laughs> it felt like such a privilege and an honor because they are pure creatives, pure artists. Who are also cyclists and have found this magic place where it coexists. There's a spirit. There's a movement. There's an energy, and I think Night Riders Chapter Three and Brompton are all at the nexus of that. I've made new friends. I've seen new places. I'd have never crossed paths with them if it wasn't for the collaboration with Chapter Three and Brompton.
相信大家都可以看到这台 Brompton Chapter Three V Four 带来不一样的风格以及生活形态。那接下来就即将为各位揭晓第一项新品 Chapter Three V Four Brompton Collaboration. Next up is our first product launch, Chapter Three V Four Folding Bike. So we would like to invite Kenny and James. 我们有请邀约集团董事长 Kenny， 还有 Chapter Three 的共同创办人 James 一起来为我们揭幕。请大家把眼光看到我们的红布条这边。Please welcome Jenny. Kenny and James, let's come down together, and you two just unveil this beautiful bike, okay? 好，欢迎现场的大家，我们一起三二一起来倒数。好，那媒体朋友们也要小心拍摄的画面，不要被挡到喽。大家准备好了吗 ？Let's come down. Three, two, one. Please unveil Brompton Chapter Three V Four. Wow, 实体车看起来更美更香。那现在我们邀请两位贵宾来到我们的舞台中央。Please come to the center, and 我们的工作人员帮我们把车辆牵到中间哦，哦，让后方的媒体朋友们方便拍摄。Brompton Chapter Three V Four 是由英国知名的折叠车品牌 Brompton 最新联名的限量折叠车。那稍后我们将由 James 来进行详细的介绍。The Brompton Chapter Three V Four is the latest design collaboration between Brompton and Chapter Three. Later on, James will be providing an in-depth product intro. 好，各位媒体朋友都拍到了吗？好。Thank you. 谢谢 Kenny. 谢谢 Kenny. 请先回座。那 James, please stay. Because would you like to introduce yourself a little bit? Introduce、uh, Chapter Three a bit, and also talk about that lovely bike. So my name is James Carnes. I am one of the founders of Chapter Three, the brand.、Um, David Miller is the original founder of the brand, ex-pro racer and uh, decorated. Um, Pro rider in multiple different arenas, as Kenny has talked to you about. David would have loved to been here. I have the pleasure to join Kenny and the team to introduce the bike.、Um, Chapter Three as a brand was started after David finished his pro racing career and decided that there was a new chapter in his life where he wanted to do all of the things that he never got to do when he was a pro. He wanted the apparel that he never had. He wanted to start looking into bikes that he never got to ride, and. In the beginning, the collaboration with Brompton was absolutely perfect for him because it represented a new style of riding for him beyond road racing and road riding on a daily basis. The Brompton bike allowed him to ride around the city. He was living in Girona. He could carry the bike upstairs. He could pack the bike away inside of the studio, and he could go out and he could ride and have a really fun time. What Brompton really appreciated was David's insights into. Much more of a performance product, taking the normal Brompton folding bike outside of being a commuter bike that was very logical and very practical, and taking weight off of it, changing the stance of the bike, and making something that was much more about the, the joy of riding and much less about the function of riding. So that was the start of the bike, and it's evolved from there, as you've seen in the video. It's gone from being something that was much more Of a racer bike inspired to being something that's much more lifestyle inspired today, going back to David's roots as a young kid riding a BMX bike. So how does that come to life in the bike? Let me show you a couple of things or talk about a couple of details that you'll find on the bike. The choice to use the standard P line is perfect. You get a steel frame on the bike, which gives you a little bit of a softer ride, riding up and down curbs. And as David likes to make a few jumps here and there, it gives a little bit of a softer. Landing for him. That said, you still go with the titanium fork and back frame that lightens up the bike and gives you a little bit more of an advantage for speed. The stance that you see on the bike is sometimes seen on other Bromptons today, but this was really the first time that you see this handlebar being flat and a little bit lower. The physique seat that David loves to ride on,、uh, a remnant from his professional career, is one of the advantages he likes to put on the bike. Some aesthetic details. The choice of the fat sidewall on the bike also kind of throws back to memory David has of、uh, his BMX days, and the four-speed gearing actually gives you an advantage to be able to take off and accelerate, but also ride a little bit faster for a long, longer distance. So these are really the details that kind of build this bike into a way that matches David's riding style. 
And the last thing that I want to talk about is the importance for us at Chapter 3 of the overall aesthetics of our brand and how it comes to life in this bike. Everything that we create is meant to be something that has a higher level of aesthetic value, being more elegant, more premium, but then still providing a functional aesthetic that is something different that you see in the market. So we think that this is captured pretty well in the bike that we've done before, more so in this bike here. You still have the signature Chapter 3 red, fire red in the front, but some of the details have been updated to this really cool teal color that you see not only in the bike, but also in the shoe later. So that's a little bit of the story behind Chapter 3 and the bike. Um, some details from my side. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you, James. Please take your seat. And I will do a little bit of translation here. 好，我简单的快速讲一下。其实刚才他有提到 Chapter Three 这个品牌呢，是由 David Miller 他从职业车手退役之后所创立的。那 David Miller 他不只是想要哎骑乘非常竞速的公务车，他也想要骑一些哎其他的感觉的车辆。就像是 F1 赛车手为什么不能开 Mini Cooper 呢？所以就是这样的因缘际会之下 ，David 开始参与了呃这些 Brompton Bike 的设计，还有包含服饰，他可以穿得更好的质料，更好的呃款式。那当然，这一次 Brompton V4 啊，有非常多更新的部分，像是他刚才提到的钛合金前后差，让这个速度可以更再加上去，也更轻量化。那另外包含了 Fisig 的坐垫，当然还有我们坐管底下有一个小包。那在使用的手把还有前端的这个火焰红呢，它是 Chapter Three 的经典色彩，呃，火焰红。那还有非常多的细节，比如说轻量的内胎啊 t u b o l i t t l e 啊，以及他刚才提到这台呃小布是 P Line， 因为 David 他本身很喜欢你知道跳跃啊，所以这台车需要非常坚固，但偶尔也需要兼顾一些弹性。好的，那就是这关于第一个商品 Chapter Three Crossover Brompton V4 的部分。那看完了 Chapter Three V4， 接下来我们就要揭晓第二项新品，就是 Chapter Three 的 Transit 车鞋。这项车鞋真的是现在市面上绝无仅有，所以在这之前，先来欣赏一段影片。On to our next product, the new Transit shoes. Before, let's take a look. For the majority of my life, cycling was about racing and the constant pursuit of marginal gains in performance. At Chapter Three, we want to take that attitude and reimagine urban cycling. Our collaboration with Brompton over the years has allowed us to see and experience the future of urban living. Cities all over the world are being redesigned for bikes, and with it comes a new style of life, where we, the riders, own the roads and beyond. The missing component to this is the shoe. We needed something that worked on the bike and off it, something that nobody's been able to achieve so far. My name is James Carnes.、Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, "How would you create a shoe that I could walk in, completely normal, and ride on my bike in the best way possible?" Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of. Your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling, and then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation, sort of, for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. I didn't think it was possible, and then I met James Carnes, and we designed. Developed and made the transit shoe. So the shoe we've created is really premium in terms of the materials we use. It's made in Germany. There are three benefits that we built into the shoe. Number one is that it's super comfortable. The second benefit is that you have this integrated SPD compatibility. It's there if you need it, and if you don't need it, then you don't even notice it's there. It's hidden and it's underneath the shoe, and that leads to the third benefit, which is that it's noiseless. The end result is something that looks fantastic and is able to be worn all day long on the bike or off the bike. 接下来即将要揭晓的就是 Chapter Three 的 Transit。我们请工作人员帮我们把即将跟大家见面的车鞋拿到我们的舞台中央。那接下来我们要再次邀请邀约集团董事长、执行长 Kenny 以及 Chapter Three 的共同创办人 James 上台来为我们进行揭幕。
。那这双鞋呢，就是同时也是 Jam 设计的。稍后他会跟我们分享这个设计的理念。So again, we would like to count down three, two, one. Let's do it together, okay? Count down three, two, one. Please unveil. Wow! 相信大家对 Transit 都非常好奇，这双实用与时尚兼具的车鞋，充满了都会风情。好的，我们谢谢啊，两位贵宾先看上我们前方，我们再稍微拍一下照。还有，好，来要拍照的媒体朋友可以举手，不要客气。Okay, thank you, thanks, Kenny and James. Please take your seat. Take your seat. 好，那为了让各位呢能更近距离的看到我们的车鞋，我们现在就有请 model 来为我们演绎这双 Chapter Three Transit。Transit 是世界上第一款专为城市骑行而设计的车鞋，外形犹如时尚运动鞋，但却具备专业车鞋的功能。稍后将由设计师本人 James 来进行产品的介绍。Transit is the first cycling shoe in the world that has been purely engineered for riding in the city. The urban cycling shoe looks like a fashion sneaker, yet functions like a cycling shoe. Later on, the designer James will give an in-depth intro. Good, thank you, model. Let us enjoy the view of this car. Now, let us give a warm welcome to the designer James to share the features of this shoe and design concept. Now, we would like to invite James, the designer of Transit, to give an in-depth intro to these shoes. Hello again. Um, so you saw a little bit already in the video. Uh, I met David a few years ago, and he explained to me that his life had changed. He was in his chapter three, and he was spending a lot more time um, off the bike than on the bike. And he had tried other products that were sort of lifestyle inspired, but they were meant to be compatible with an SPD. And he asked me, isn't there another way that we could actually create this? So I want to take you through kind of how we actually built the product different from some of the other things that are out there. We're not the first ones to try this, but I think we found a solution that's first of its kind. So the first thing I want to talk about a little bit is if we, if we take a look at how the shoe is actually designed, there are two pieces of this that are really different. Um, one is that we've developed a plate that is very small. And you may look at that and say, hmm, that might be too small. Well, let me explain kind of how this works. One advantage of this is that the plate itself is exactly aligned with where you would press down on the pedal. And so you get a maximum force distribution, meaning that it's evened out when you press down. You don't feel it. The way that we do that is that inside of the shoe, in between the sole and the upper, we actually have a very thin board that goes on the bottom of the, of the upper itself that's on a normal shoe. And all we've done is selected a material that we found that allows a little bit more stiffness. And the third thing that we've done is the way that we've put this together, the sole is actually injected out of material called PU, polyurethane, and the plate is made out of a special material, a special kind of TPU that actually comes from uh, football boots. It's much more flexible, but it's also providing the stiffness and it's lighter weight than anything that's out there on the market. Normal cycling cleats or cycling shoes are made with a nylon plate. It's much thicker and it's much stiffer, which is fantastic if you're riding as a pro and you want no flexibility. It's not great if you want to be able to walk and round in the shoe. We've created a completely sealed component so that your plate on the inside is movable and you also have an additional cushion on top of the shoe. So even with some of the mountain bike shoes or hy hybrid shoes that you would buy, you never have this piece on the top and so you tend to feel some of the pressure from the, the cleat. When this piece is put into the mold, and the midsole, the white PU part, is injected around it. The two materials actually form a mechanical bond, so they melt together. And that's exactly what makes this shoe different, is that when they bond together, the sole with the plate plus the board that's inside gives you 
both flexibility and stiffness in exactly the right place. And uh, we were fortunate enough to find a manufacturer in Germany that helped us to innovate that called Footwear Innovation Lab. And so what that gives you is, you can have a shoe, I have to find the right one, um, that you can walk around in that is completely noiseless even when you have the SPD inside. It's not just even with the bottom, it's actually recessed underneath. So even if you put a little bit of pressure on the shoe itself, you will be able to touch down, but you kind of have to push on it. So most people, when we walk, land on our heel, we toe off, and we have a little bit less pressure on our forefoot. So we call that noiseless. It's an advantage if you want to actually wear these to work in the morning and then walk around all day. You do not want to sound like you're a tap dancer. You want to actually be a little bit quieter than that. The second thing that you get out of this is because the plate is only in the forefoot where you see the red on the side, the heel is actually really flexible. So the whole shoe is quite flexible. So you get cushioning in the heel and you get flexibility in the forefoot. The important thing is you have to try the shoe on. And as Kenny said, tomorrow you'll have the opportunity as the first people in Asia, I think actually the first people in the world, who can try the bike and the shoe together tomorrow at the event if you've signed up. So that cushioning and that flexibility is something you will not get out of any other shoe. And the last piece of this, as I said, um, we were fortunate enough to find a innovation lab in Germany. Um, it's about four hour drive from where I live in Germany currently. And, um, it's in the town of Permisens, and Permisens happens to be the original footwear town in Germany, of all places. So Adidas, Puma are still uh, on the other side of the country, but originally Permisens is where they made all of the footwear for the military for like three or four hundred years. So there's still some people there doing innovation, and we found a lab there called Footwear Innovation Lab. They helped us to develop the shoe. They built a new factory, and so they're now actually helping us to produce the shoes. So the shoes are actually made in Germany, and you can pre-order them on chapter3.com, and they will soon be available for pre-order on Thermaltake um, as our exclusive partner in all of Asia. So that's a little bit more background on the shoe. I think the last thing that I would say, going back to that point about uh, aesthetics and style, was really important for David uh, and myself, being a, a shoe designer and at shoe company for many years. The style of the shoe had to be something that you would wear every day. It had to fit into a little bit of this sort of street BMX aesthetic that David liked. And we wanted to have something that was premium in terms of its quality. So we chose materials that were extremely durable and valuable. And we made sure that the overall look of the shoe looked like something that you could wear out to dinner, which David would do with a suit. You could wear it during the day and you could also wear it on your bike. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Jane. Please take your seat. 好，再帮大家简单的翻译一下刚才的资讯量，真的太大了。总之 ，James 呢，因为他在制鞋产业已经有二十五年的经验，所以透过这样子鞋底特殊的设计，我们可以把卡踏 SPD 的卡踏完全的。藏在这双鞋子下面，而且像他刚才讲的，其实它的卡呃鞋底是非常柔软的，所以你真的穿了走了一整天，你还是会觉得非常的舒适。那当然，因为他们是呃德国的实验室来帮忙设计以及制造，加上 Chapter Three， 其实对所有的不管是材质或者是款式，都是以最高标准来要求，所以这一双卡鞋的质量真的是非常的高。那明天开始可以试穿以及订购，那这将会是全亚洲。唯一的机会在这边可以跟这双鞋子见面，所以今天大家可以看到实体是真的都非常的幸运。那接下来我们要迎接的是 Chapter Three 的第三个新品喽。这一次的联名是与 Aquila c a d r i 车队联名的涂装车。我们同样先来欣赏一段影片。On to our third product, the Chapter Three crossover Aquila c a d r i Cycling Team. Hey, I'm Frank Mazursky. Hey, my name is Britt. My name is、uh, Marco. I'm 44 years old. I'm the second Marco on the team, and this is my 13th season of riding. I'm a BMW master mechanic, 15 years and counting. My name's Koki.、Um, I like to say it's like Oki Doki Koki, but it starts with a C.、Um,
支来自加拿大的车队 c a r d r e 展现的是完全不一样的骑乘风格。那接下来，让我们掌声欢迎 Kenny 以及 Aquila Cycles 的执行长 Frank m i z e r s k i 上台来为我们准备要揭晓新品。来，我们的新品在这边 ，Chapter Three Crossover Aquila。Let's welcome Thermal Tech CEO Mr. Kenny Lin again and the CEO of Aquila Cycles, Mr. Fran Mazursky. 好，那我们大家一起来倒数三二一，好不好 ？Let's count down together. Three, two, one. Please unveil Chapter Three 与 Aquila by Cadre 车队联名涂装车独家登台。我们现在邀请两位贵宾来到我们的舞台中央。Please come to the center. 那我们也请工作人员帮忙把车辆移至舞台前。哇，这样大胆的配色其实是非常少见的。现场的媒体朋友可以趁机捕捉画面。Chapter Three 与加拿大知名车队品牌 Aquila Cycles 打造一款独一无二的公路车。那稍后我们会由 CEO Frank 来进行详细的产品介绍。好，我们一起看向前方。Cheers. Chapter Three has again collaborated with Aquila Cycles to design a one-of-a-kind road bike, and Aquila CEO Frank will be giving an in-depth product product intro later on. 好，好的，谢谢 Kenny. Kenny， 请先回座。And Frank, please stay. Okay, may you please introduce yourself first and talk about this bike. Sure. 你好。你好。My name is Frank Mazursky. I am the CEO and brand developer for Aquila Cycles.、Um, I'm almost certain that nobody here has heard of Aquila before. We're actually a bicycle brand that originates from Italy, from the、uh, Labruzzi region,、uh, from a town called L'Aquila. So my history in the sport of cycling、um, runs very deep. My family's been in the sport and industry of cycling for close to 50 years now. And my father started our retail chain, Racer Sportif, in 1978. So I wasn't around at that time. I came shortly thereafter. But that's like the history、um, of our business. And you know, as we approached into the late 80s and early 90s, my father told me he had a strong desire to have his own bicycle brand.、Um, and during that time, we used to distribute a bicycle brand from Holland called Concord Bikes. But unfortunately, the Concord brand was issued a cease and desist, and they were no longer allowed to use that trademark because of Concord Aviation. So, unfortunately, the partnership my dad had in that it, it folded. But at the same time, that that Veltech company had the distribution rights for Aquila. So, once that dissolved, my father bought the the trademark rights to Aquila, and we've been developing it ever since.、Um, You know, our model for selling our bikes is a little bit different than most brands that you're going to find today.、Um, we actually only sell Aquila cycles through our Racer Sportif chain and through our website, AquilaCycles.com.、Um, but you know, we're getting to a point now as we're growing as a brand from an organic approach. You know, we've had, you know, we're a small brand and we've had many of opportunities to grow fast, grow quick.、Um, but for us. We don't do this because you know we want to get rich or we want to sell lots of bikes. We do this because our family is super passionate about cycling. Like our slogan is "Cycling is in our DNA." We all ride. My dad used to be an ex-professional. I raced a little bit. wasn't very good. Probably better <laughs> hockey player from Canada, right? Whoa!、Um, but still, like you know, we love cycling, and it's like it's crazy. My, my, we'll be at work all day. Talking to people about bikes, building bikes around bikes, and like my dad will go home and put on GCN, and be watching cycling. And my mom's like, "What are you doing? Like, like you've been doing this all day. Like, aren't you sick and tired of this?" And the answer is no. Like, you know, this is what we love. Like, we're super passionate about cycling,、um, and we look at the brand Aquila as as our canvas, and you know, a way for us to express ourselves and our. Many years around the sport of cycling, as to like what we think makes a great bike great. You know, we're not professing to be trailblazers here, but you know, certainly we have a fine eye for detail. We work on all kinds of different bikes,、um, and so this is like our interpretation of what we think makes a great bicycle. And you know, that's what、uh, this bike is.、Um, moving on,、um, people will notice the video that was just played and the word cadre. Cadre. So Cadre、um, started off,、um, and I should backtrack this. People are asking, like, how are you associated with Chapter Three? So 
we were one of the first Chapter 3 retailers in Canada when they were in initial collaboration with Stephen Smith and the people at Castelli. And what happened was, I guess, it, they had gone their separate ways. I was under the impression that, you know, Chapter 3 is kind of done and over with. And oddly enough, I got approached by David, which, you know, kind of blew me away. And he's like, hey, I noticed you were one of our retailers in Canada. Like, are you still interested in carrying the brand? And I'm like, to be honest with you, like, I didn't know where that stood. And he goes, you know, if you can give me the opportunity, I'd like to get on a call with you and, and my buddy James. And, you know, from that day on, we got on that Zoom call and I was really intrigued and blown away by their philosophy and, you know, what the brand Chapter 3 stands for, right? You know, I come from a history where cycling was always about performance and racing. Not the thing that attracted me to the sport of cycling, to be honest. I like riding my bike as the way it makes me feel. And I'm sure there's a lot of people in here that feel the same way. You know, the sport of cycling is evolving and it's growing into something much bigger than that. And, you know, that's moving on to what Cadre is about. So David and I, we started brainstorming, you know, how can we create and, and grow the awareness for the Chapter 3 brand in Canada? Because um, at the time, you know, it was really for the aficionados and the people that are into those kind of niche brands, right? It wasn't very mainstream. And I've always liked to take an organic approach. I think it comes across more genuine to people. You know, we could have just said, well, let's just hire a marketing agency and let's just go to town and throw money at this and almost force people to buy it. And I'm like, I have a good idea. I think we should put together a team and not a racing team, but a team of people that, you know, understand where the direction of cycling is going and it's more into a lifestyle direction, right? Not everybody races. Most people, they just ride their bike for fun, right? And, you know, the sport of cycling has kind of come from the days where you would wear a uniform with logos for the club or team you raced for. You didn't really care what it looked like. It could have holes in it. And, you know, that's kind of your battle scores. And we've kind of grown into this, like, you know, fashion forward. You know, it's very important. You know, people want to have their nice bike and their nice clothes and they want to ride to the coffee shop or to the patio and kind of interact with people and it's it's kind of morphed into this like new breed of cyclists and I think that's what chapter three is trying to achieve that's kind of the direction we want to go into and we we felt that that was a really good partnership and with cadre you know I'm like we need to put together a team of people that have the same philosophy and understanding the word cadre if you go in the dictionary it means a small collection of people that are trained for a particular purpose and our purpose is to change the stigma of cycling from something that's exclusive to more inclusive right the growth in cycling is not within the people necessarily that are already in the sport of cycling it's the people that just got into it and historically cycling for you know for in our marketplace specifically has been for like snobs elitist people, people that, you know, have their head too high and it's not an inviting sport. So we want to be able to walk the walk or ride the walk, but at the same time, you know, we want to be the people that embrace people that have interest for cycling and encourage, you know, them wanting to get into it because we want to share the benefit of cycling and what it does for us and for other people that have been captivated. You know, we've all had a tough time the last three years with COVID and I'm sure here and, you know, in other parts of the world, cycling went crazy. And I think if the industry can understand how that can change the direction in which things are going, it could be massive. Let's just say we were to be able to retain 30% of the people that got in the sport of cycling over the last three years. What is that going to mean to the long-term growth? Because prior to COVID, the sport of cycling in our marketplace was kind of it was fizzling out a little bit and we needed like another boost. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, it was a very tough time for everybody, but for cycling specifically, it was almost a blessing in disguise. So our cadre team is on these bikes and we're out, you know, at different events, you know, going to the, the local places in which people ride their bike and we want to go and interact with those people and we want to be good ambassadors. You know, yeah, we're going to do some racing and stuff, but it's not all about that. It's about celebrating the sport of cycling and where it's headed, but at the same time, you know, paying homage and respect to where cycling has come from. And that's kind of what, what Cadre is about. You know, David and I, you know, have thrown around some ideas that, 
you know, maybe cadre doesn't stop here. And maybe cadre is born in Toronto and it evolves to other places. Who knows, maybe we have a cadre chapter in Taipei. Whoa. I know Pooh would like that wherever Whoa. he is. <laughs> But yeah, like it's, you know, that's, that's what it's about. It's, it's, it's about growing together as a cycling culture and we, we welcome everybody that wants to be a part of it. So moving on to the bike, because I'm sure you guys are probably more intrigued about that than me babbling on about my cycling history. But um, the Akeep model is Aquila's flagship model. This is like our high performance racing bike, which for 2023 is entering its fourth iteration. So it's, it's fourth generation. If you go onto our website right now, the current Evos you'll see um, are changing. You know, not in massive ways, but ways that we felt made sense. We use the moniker Evo on our model name because the Akeep is something that has been evolving and is going to continue to evolve. You know, we're not looking to throw away what it is we've done in the past and start fresh all over. We want to learn lessons from the previous models to find ways to make it better. And you know, that's how life is. Everybody wants to get better and they want to learn from their mistakes and, and try to improve. And you know, this bike certainly embodies that. So the last couple of years, I was riding a prototype Evo and I was playing around with different tensile strengths of carbon fiber from Torica in Japan, which is the largest carbon manufacturer and probably the best carbon that you would use specifically for bicycle fabrication. And so after being able to gain a good understanding as to how that material reacts, we felt it was the next phase to implement it into the evolution of this Akeep Evo R, which is now quite a bit lighter than the outgoing model. But it didn't stop there. You know, yes, the Evo was very, uh, the Akeep Evo was very aerodynamic, but at the same time, a little bit heavy in comparison to the previous model, which the Canadian men's national team raced on, which was called the Akeep R, more of like a pure climbing bike. But the market is, is commanding, you know, I would say a bike that does a little bit more than one thing. You know, people want it to be aero, but they don't want the drawbacks of what comes with aero bikes. And that's being heavy because something that's more truncated requires more material for structural integrity and vertically it's stiff. So what we did was we went back into, you know, and dug deep in the, in the computational fluid dynamics software and we're like, how can we reduce the weight of the Akeep, the current Akeep Evo, but at the same time actually advancing aerodynamics? And if we look at historically with aero bikes, the concept was to manipulate the tubes of the frame to manipulate air. But that only works in certain instances if you've ever worked in a wind tunnel or worked with computational fluid dynamic software. It's very hard to make the bike balanced. So, you know, if you look at other industries like F1, you look at certain bikes that were developed for the velodrome, instead of trying to tighten everything up and force air, why don't we open it up like an F1 car? Let the air pass through it. So what we decided to do is we were pretty happy with the main triangle of the frame, but you know, where could we make that improvement? So we redesigned our front fork to be half a centimeter wider at the crown and half a centimeter wider at the rear seat stays. And so what happens is air passes through the front of the bike in a very critical area. And if it becomes turbulent, it's going to exhaust slower around a very critical area of the bike where the rider's legs are moving. Um, and we want it to remain laminar and cool and then exhaust out the back. And that is proven to be much more efficient than having something that's got wheel fairings and tightening everything up to force air. Um, and at the same time, it allowed us to actually round off the tube shapes, um, which is gonna allow us to increase vertical compliance, but also overall reduce the weight of the bike. And for those few that have been able to ride the Akeep Evo R, over the last nine months, uh, they're convinced for sure. Kenny was convinced yesterday when we went for a ride to Dado Jang for cheesecake and coffee. Um, and the Cadre team has been racing on it. A lot of you may not know, but the, um, this paint job, we don't sell this to the public in Canada. This is actually a paint job which we've remained exclusive for the Cadre team and, and Kenny. But, there could be a possibility where we would actually open up 
a select sales of this frame uh, starting off in the Taiwanese market. So you would be having the opportunity to have something that we feel is very special and that people are captivated by. And I'll finish off just by the paint job because it's probably the biggest question I have and not about the technicalities of technology. Um, historically, my paint jobs for bikes have been very reserved. And I got the help of Mr. James Carnes. We actually designed this paint job over WhatsApp. <laughs> so I came to him and David and I said, you know, what do you guys think of this? Yeah, it's cool, but James is like, I don't know, it doesn't pop. And I'm like, what do you mean? It looks cool. It's got the corporate colors of, of chapter three, which is aqua teal, uh, fire red, um, and outer space. And he's like, let me throw some things at you. And he came back with some absolutely wild stuff to the point where our factory didn't even want to entertain the idea of trying to paint it, even attempt it. So we scaled back and then we finally settled on this. And I'll be very honest with you, the reception on it has been beyond my wildest dreams and expectations. There's not a day that goes by where I'm out on this bike and people stop me and be like, holy smokes, like, look at that bike, look at that paint job. And I'm sure that you guys all feel the same way. So, you know, that's all of that in a little bit bigger than a nutshell. And that's me yesterday riding with Kenny. You know, I want to thank Mr. Kenny and his Thermal Take team for the opportunity to fly over from Canada. I feel, I feel very blessed for this opportunity to share what it is that we're doing um, and riding in a beautiful place. Like, it, aside from this morning, I get up every morning and I try to dodge the scooters to, uh, to ride around Taipei because I think it's an absolutely uh, beautiful country. And, my father specifically has been doing business in Taiwan for close to 40 years now. And I remember as a kid, in the spring and the fall, he would always go to Taiwan. And he's formed some strong relationships, and I feel that I'm continuing in his footsteps to do so and, and, and would hope to do so. So, again, thank you so much. Um, I hope you guys enjoy, and, and thank you for coming out. This is an absolutely incredible event. Thank you. Thank you. Xie Xie. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Please take your seat. 好，快速的讲一遍。Aquila 这个牌子呢，一开始是来自意大利。那因为 Frank 他的家人自己是做自行车，很多年爸爸也是职业车手，所以他们对自行车的要求以及热爱，从这个制造商的角色呢，那就把它继续接过来做。那当然 ，Aquila 他跟 Chapter Three 就是偶然之间接上线了这样。那他们觉得说，哎，如果要在加拿大就是推广这个品牌，该怎么做才好呢？要推广 Chapter Three 这个品牌的话，那刚好 Frank 他们有一个呃车队，就是 Car 呃 Cadre。那他刚才说 Cadre 这个名字就是一小群人一起朝着目一个目标去做一件他们喜欢的事情。那他们喜欢的事就是骑脚踏车，但是他们骑脚踏车不是要打打杀杀，不是要讲吉瓦，不是要讲推力比，他们就是要一起享受这个骑乘的过程。那他们也很欢迎就是新呃初心者菜鸟一起来加入。他们希望营造这种愉快的氛围，让更多人来享受骑车的乐趣。所以呢，这个 c a d r e 车队就跟呃 Chapter Three 就是联名了这个车款。那刚才他有提到，其实在这个风阻的部分，在前叉跟后叉都做了一些改变。那他们也经过就是测试啦，包含 Kenny 本身自己骑 c a d r e 的队员自己骑，是有非常大的改善。那当然，大家看到这个配色，应该也都会觉得眼睛很为之一亮，因为我们通常不会看到红色跟。这个薄荷绿或者是呃海底鸡色，就是通常不会放在一起，所以其实他们说他对这个设计也非常的感到呃。觉得很骄傲，然后大家其实也看到这一台 c a r d r e 的联名车，公路联名车跟我们的 Chapter Three 的颜色是有互相呼应的，因为其实在 Chapter Three 上面也有一点点的这个薄荷绿，所以呢，这里面有非常多的小细节。那先跟大家预告一下，因为这台车上面其实写了很多很可爱的小文字，它比如说它们会写什么 Breakfast Beers， 呃 Breakfast Beers 啊，就是他们喜欢骑完早餐时间骑完车之后一起去喝杯酒，那这是他们的骑车文化，所以里面有非常多可爱的小细节，大家。大家等一下可以来看。好，前三个新品都已经让大家感到哇，真的好棒。那我们还有重头戏要等着大家。那这个时候，我们先邀请工作人员帮我们把车子，我们先移回到我们的展示台，因为接下来的要等着跟大家见面的是我们 Chapter Three 的时装秀，时装秀即将要正式登场了。Are you ready for the Chapter Three Fashion Show? OK, DJ, drop the beat. Yes. 
款空力竞速车衣 Chapter Three 经典火焰红，竞赛等级超轻量面料，使用的是 90% 回收再生的布料，搭配 Chapter Three 无袖底衫以及春夏款碳黑色的车裤。The Mission Cycling Sportswear Series features ultra ultralight and aerodynamic cut jerseys made of 90% recycled fabric. Here we have the aero jersey in fire red, the base layer in storm blue, and bib shorts in carbon black. Women's summer winter long sleeve shirt, Chapter Three, Fire Red, is a famous brand for its high-performance sports bra. It's suitable for the demand for quick and durable fabric. It's made of 100% recyclable 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 fabric. It's made of 100% It can also be paired with the carbon black packable jacket. Chapter 3 From the Mission Series, the Aero Jersey in Outer Space Suit player with the bib shorts in Forest Green are designed to fit like the second skin. This outfit features an electric purple aero jersey. Moisture wickening base layer and forest green shorts inspired by yoga pant designs. The long sleeve aero jersey in fire red and outer space blue weave shorts are designed for aero resistance.
草率女款空力竞速车衣，使用百分之九十回收的再生布制成，搭配专为女性设计的高性能平口车裤，欧洲制造的卓越品质。Made in Europe, this monochromatic look is composed of a leeching green aero jersey and forest green 9-inch shorts. Thank The Aero Jersey, base layer and bib shorts in outer space blue are made of ultralight and breathable performance fabric. This last outfit from the Mission Cycling Sportswear series is styled with an aero jersey and bib shorts in forest green, paired with a Brompton collaboration Chapter 3 hat and back to achieve a gravel look. Chapter Three 对经典运动衫的现代诠释，剪裁利落且细节精致。它是由柔软的有机棉制成，为日常生活而精心打造。搭配上首款专为城市骑行而设计的 Transit 日光白都会卡鞋，易于行走，而且更轻松上卡。Next is the Traffic Street Wear Series, the Elise Crew Next. West shirt in navy blue is designed for comfort and style. Completing the casual street look is the transit cleat shoes in day white. Chapter Three, 精致至完美。无论骑车或是一般日常，都能提供超舒适性和透气性，是一款适合您日常生活的真正高质感必备单品。百分之百有机棉，英国手工制造。The Alessi Crew Women's T-shirt in white is made of 100% organic cotton and made in UK. The breathable material makes it perfect for cycling or everyday wear. Chapter 
Factory 女款圆领卫衣，剪裁利落且细节精致。V 型缝线的细节，英国手工制造，高品质。搭配上女性平口车裤，以及搭配 Transit 夜幕黑都会车鞋，整体呈现都会的通勤风格。Another piece for the Traffic Streetwear series is the Elise Crew Woman's Sweet Sweatshirt. It is paired with the versatile Transit Urban Cycling Shoe in Night Black. The Chapter Three Elise Zip Hoodie in Navy Blue is matched with the Elise White T-shirt and paired with the Chapter Three. Crossover thousand helmet for a smart casual look. Chapter Three 连帽夹克搭配 Chapter Three 的运动灰圆领 T 和小帽，呈现假日休闲骑乘的自行车风格。The Chapter Three Elise Zip Hoodie in Navy Blue is coordinated with a Elise Gray Mark T-shirt, a fire red cap, and a Chapter Three crossover Brompton bag. Three 运动灰圆领卫衣，以百分之百有机棉制成，搭配 Trip to Three 森林绿的连身车裤，呈现假日休闲骑乘的自行车风格。The Chapter Three Elise Crew sweatshirt in gray mark is made of high quality 100% organic cotton. The forest green bib shorts continues the street casual cycling look. Chapter Three Asia Hub Taiwan 限定 T model 手中展示的 Transit 日光白都会车鞋，采用最新进的独家技术 OWN On 设计。On 代表与自然合而为一，这意味着支持您的自然生物力学，使用天然材料，并为您提供与自然性能结合的技术。Here we have the Chapter Three Asia Hub Limited T-shirt in black. Enhance is the transit flat pedal urban cycling shoe in day wide design for best and stylish urban riding.
Chapter Three Asia Hop Taiwan 限定 T 手中展示的 Transit 夜幕黑都会卡鞋，鞋底板是一种革命性的新型鞋板技术。可为车友提供登山车卡踏 SPD 兼容性，并将力量直接传递至踏板，脚感去除了一般传统车鞋的不适感。脚底板完全隐藏在中底鞋鞋室内，确实减少 SPD 卡踏扣片接触地面，对于一般路面的行走更为顺畅。Now we have the Chapter Three Asia Hub Taiwan Limited T in white. Display in hand is the Transit SPD compatible urban cycling shoe in nine black. The own micro plate is a revolutionary new plate technology to give the rider SPD compatibility and force transfer to the pedal without the stiffness of the normal plate. Chapter Three Apparel Collection 在欧洲制造并且是由专业的自行车手来设计。那今天展示的十六套服装为 Mission 专业车服，还有 Traffic 都会休闲两大系列。那 Chapter Three 的服装呢，就是要确保所有的自行车爱好者在骑乘的过程中都可以享受这个乐趣。所以无论是公路比赛、单车冒险，或者是通勤，美学设计跟实用功能的结合都是非常重要的。The Chapter Three Apparel Collection is made in Europe and designed by a pro cyclist. The 16 looks on show today are from the Mission Cycling Sportswear and Traffic Streetwear series. Chapter Three Cycling Apparel is designed for all occasions, so whether it's road racing, casual riding, or commuting, the collection is a perfect combination of functionality and the style. 今天非常感谢各位 model 们为我们演绎 Chapter Three 的最新系列。那接下来媒体朋友们也可以把握拍摄的时间。我们再次邀请到我们的 model 来到我们的舞台中间。Model 们今天为我们演绎 Chapter Three 的最新系列。那接下来我们也要邀请三位贵宾来到舞台前进行合影。Now we would like to invite Kenny, James, and Frank to the stage. And of course, 我们的 Brompton Chapter Three V4， 还有我们的 Padre 车队版涂装车也要一同入境。我们请我们的工作人员帮我们把车鞋 Transit。还有我们的 Padre 车队版涂装，以及 Chapter Three V4 一起来到我们的舞台前方。那现在各位媒体朋友们可以尽情的拍摄。好，我们先一起看向前方，前方有非常多的摄影大哥大姐们。先先先感谢各位媒体的来到。Cheers。好，那我们稍微看向左边，左手边，左手边 ，Left hand side，Left hand side。There are so many press here. 好，我们接下来将目光带到右手边，右手边也有非常多的媒体朋友们，谢谢各位今天的到来。好，那有拍摄需求的都可以举手，让我们知道一下。OK， again we look to the front， 我们往前再看一次。好的，各位媒体都有拍摄到画面了吗？有没有谁有什么特殊的需求可以举手？没有关系哦。OK， 非常谢谢三位贵宾 ，Thank you， please take your seat， Thank you very much， Thank you， thanks Frank， Kenny and James。那我们今天也非常感谢六位 model 们为我们演绎 Chapter Three 的最新品。那当然，今天也要非常感谢各位每一位来到现场，还有收看直播、喜欢自行车的朋友们，在这边也要跟大家预告 Chapter Three Brompton V4 的一些购买资讯。抽签的资讯，来，我们接下来一起看一下我们的大屏幕。首先呢，邀请大家先注册 T T Bike 一八五耀越单车线上商城会员，并且填写报名资料。那回复相关的问题就可以报名参加抽签。我们一共会有两个中签的名额。那这个购买的组合也可以参考屏幕上有包含 Chapter Three Brompton V4 的车款，以及跟 Thousand 联名的安全帽，还有包含今天刚推出的这个 Transit 的车鞋。那当然，我们下一页、下一个页面有我们的 Q R code， 所以如果有兴趣的朋友，扫这个 Q R code 就可以直接到我们的网页。
好，那今天活动到这边告一个段落，稍后的时间大家可以尽情的赏车，摸摸我们 Chapter Three 的车衣以及车库各项材质。当然，最后再次感谢各位媒体朋友们今天来到现场。那假如有任何采访的需求，都请告诉我们的工作人员，我们会尽我们最大的可能来帮助你们。那最后，祝福各位都有个美好的一天，我们下次一起骑车见喽，拜拜。My name is James Carnes.、Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, "How would you create a shoe that I could walk in, completely normal, and ride on my bike in the best way possible?" Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of. Your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling, and then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation, sort of, for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes.、Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, "How would you create a shoe that I could walk in, completely normal, and ride on my bike in the best way possible?" Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of. Your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation, sort of, for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging technologies from running. We were leveraging technologies from football or soccer to build something that was engineering a new idea in a completely different way. My name is James Carnes.、Uh, I've spent 25 years of my life in the sports industry, designing product, footwear in particular. And David asked me, "How would you create a shoe that I could walk in, completely normal, and ride on my bike in the best way possible?" Nothing really exists for that. And so the brief was really that we want a shoe that will click into your bike for the 10% of. Your commuting or riding experience on the bike that had to be, you know, live up to the standards that you were used to in cycling. And then when you got off the bike, it had to live up to the performance standards of just normal walking. So it had to be incredibly comfortable and high performance at the same time. And that was the foundation, sort of, for the architecture of the shoe. We were leveraging.